Okay, hello everyone. We are back. Uh, we have with us Lord Holmes of Richmond, who is going to deliver uh, a guest speech. Uh, thank you to Lord Holmes for joining us today. Hello. Today's topic or anything around inclusion and innovation, talent and technology. First things first, how we make more effective, more evidence-based policy. Firstly, get the evidence, peer review it, scrutinize it, and build from it. Establish where we're trying to get to with Web 3.0, what we want to achieve with the new technologies. Be utterly truthful about the solid ground on which we stand, and then put that plan in place to get from there to the place where I believe so many of us want to get to with benefits for all concerned. My thoughts on Web 3.0, I'll do it by A, B, C, D. And because A is the first letter, we'll have four A's. I think we need to think about the autonomous nature. We need to think about artificial intelligence and how we make this an artificially intelligent space as well as a human intelligent space. How we think about accountability and crucially how we think about accessibility. It would be an absolute tragedy if we make a space from scratch which has inaccessibility and exclusion built in from the beginning. It's been difficult enough to get 14th and 15th century, 16th, 17th, 18th century buildings accessible. That's one thing. But to be building, if you will, from a greenfield site, we should have accessibility and inclusion absolutely by design when it comes to Web 3.0. To be the subject which I know occupies so many of your minds for so much of your time, Blockchain, in many ways, Web, Web 3.0 could really enable blockchain's moment. There's been so much written, so much said, so much discussed around blockchain. On the positive side, I think we're through the high end of the hype cycle. That's a very good thing. We can certainly see a hype cycle with AI at the moment, so that's easy to be understood. But I think we're through the high point of the blockchain hype cycle. That's a good thing because it enables us to really focus on the use cases, the practical applications where blockchain can make a significant difference to society. To the C, cryptocurrencies, and in, in many ways, Web 3.0 will be made of three elements. It's the tokens, it's the wallets, it's digital ID operating in that broader space. And currencies are going to be critical to this. In many ways, that autonomy, that real unleashing of human potential will be, will be seen through cryptocurrencies. Anyone can issue one. It can be considered, adopted, commercialized by anyone. What Emmanuel Daniel calls the personalization of finance. Now, in saying that very short sentence, we can obviously all appreciate there are a number of pluses and minuses to that, just like any innovation, just like any development. But cryptocurrencies critical to the development and the operation of Web3. 2D, the decentralized nature. This is, I know, an exciting element for many people because it offers not just decentralized possibilities, but disintermediation, the potential to link with peers, to cut out costs, to cut out control, and to have potentially real, meaningful, sustainable, growth-creating relationships. That's the ABCD, but why not go ABCDS? Because it's a crazy alphabet today. And I want the S to get in the semantic structure of Web3. If put together right, then information will, by default, be more accessible, be more available, be more interactive with for all participants. In essence, 
the possibility is that we can become active, not passive. We can become operators, not operated on that sense of real agency, which can come if we get this right. What can government do? Well, get involved, first instance, and get involved far more than they already are. There's good stuff happening on a number of technologies, a number of proofs of concept. I was involved with the Australia-UK wine importation, which demonstrated what could be done even pre-Web3 by linking physical goods, trade documents and finances all together in real time at every beat point, right from the soil that the vines are grown in in South Australia, all the way along that supply chain to the first crate of wine, case of wine, beer comes in crates, wine comes in cases, the first case of wine arriving in London. A great proof of concept demonstrating can be done and how blockchain can be the underpin not just for the exchange of value but for the generation of value similarly in many ways a huge role which is never fully played by government is the communicating and the convening role communicating the opportunity convening a consideration of those opportunities of those risks and then moving into the standard space, regulation space and the legislation space to ensure that we're at the forefront. The UK has a real opportunity here to lead, but to lead in concert with other nations, with other organisations, with other standard setting bodies right around the world if we're going to optimise this. We also have the great good fortune of the Law Commission in the UK. They did great work on the electronic trade documents bill in draft, more of which in a bit. But also they're doing work on decentralised autonomous organisations, DAOs. And DAOs are an interesting concept. There's much discussion still to be had, but they could well be a critical part of Web3. In many ways, where we're at today is the next important staging post from when I wrote my report on blockchain in 2017. And some of the reasons why I wrote that report six years ago are still as true today. My fear was that we wouldn't ever get close to some of the proofing of opportunities, never mind at scale deployment and delivery of what blockchain could do, not least in public good situations, because too much in the public space, blockchain and Bitcoin are seen as interchangeable as the same thing. Speculative, iffy, so why would we get involved in it? Which takes us back to that communication, that convening role for government, and indeed that communication, that convening role for everyone. And some of the potential use cases that I scoped out in that report are as true today as they were then. For example, 25,000 doctor days currently taken up with proving credentials. That's important. You want to know who's operating on you. You want to know who you're consulting with. You want to know they have the qualifications, the experience. You want to know that who they say they are is who they are. With a very simple blockchain solution, those 25,000 days of proven credentials could be melted into mere moments and those days 25,000 days could be converted into care. If we take that into the Web3 and indeed the metaverse context, imagine what we could do in terms of connecting credentials to training, to meeting, to collaborating, to discussing medics in that metaverse space. One small example, but one extraordinarily powerful example of how we could get better care we could get more care, more efficient, more effective medicine, even with the current resource constraints which we currently have. In many ways, the metaverse is still nascent. There's a lot talked about, far more than what's happening. But if we conceive of it as a space, as we are doing, where we can meet, discuss, collaborate, underpinned by some powerful 
technologies such as blockchain, with our wallets, with our tokens, potentially, with our NFTs, with our dApps, and everything therein. What a potential human space. Yes, a human space enabled by technology, but a human space. And we must ensure that it is a human space because ultimately, no matter how powerful these technologies are, no matter how much potential they have, we must, must remain as prime. I mentioned earlier the electronic trade documents bill, the draft bill from the Law Commission. Absolutely delighted to say it's now the Electronic Trade Documents Act. And I described it as the most important piece of legislation that no one has heard of. Why is it so important? It's so important because it's transforming trade, the most important move in trade for 140 years. Why is it so important to mention today? Because it's the first time in the UK that we've legislated for the possibilities of these new technologies. And it comes into commencement today. What an auspicious day to have your summit when the Electronic Trade Document Act comes into force. Why is it so significant? <clears throat> because blockchain is at the heart of it and yet never mentioned in the bill, quite rightly. It talks about the criteria which are required to successfully have an electronic trade document. Why does this matter? You think, well, smart contracts have been around for a long time. We've had electronic documents. What's so special about trade documents? What's so special about them is they're possessive in nature. So if you hold the paper, you hold the goods. So very different to an agreement, to a contract. So we had to have the technology which would enable an individual or an entity to prove beyond doubt as a consequence of holding that electronic trade document that you held those goods at that moment in time. And crucially, that document could prove that no one else held those goods. Currently, it's blockchain that enables that. But as I say, the act is clever in that it specifies criteria rather than specific technology. So it's future proof in terms of technological development. We're the first G7 country to pass such legislation. We all need to work incredibly hard to ensure that other nations around the world pass similar legislation so we can all trade as a connected, digitally enabled planet. Certainly, there are economic benefits. I truly believe there are political benefits to come if we are all much more connected digitally in real time. As I say, 20th of September, what an auspicious day that you've chosen for your summit. It may not be described as it today, but I believe when we look back in not that many years, we will see that the 20th of September 2023 was blockchain's chat GPT moment. What do I mean by that? Well, there wasn't really too much talk about large language models, a lot of talk about AI, but when chat GPT burst onto the scene, it became the talk of every town. People using it, trying it out, as we all do, and all very fascinating, interesting, and lots of issues around that. Because of the Electronic Trade Documents Act, we have the most extraordinary right now, real-time use case of blockchain to underpin trade, thus to underpin economic good, environmental good, to drive public, common, social, psychological good. In conclusion to the title of your summit today, how do we get to more effective, more evidence-based policies around Web3? Well, I can do no better than turn to the subtitle of my 2017 report. I believe that subtitle still stands good today. Leadership, collaboration, innovation. That's the mission. 
to drive economic, social, and public and psychological good. It's the opportunity for all of us. Let's all take it. Enjoy the summit. I look forward to seeing all of you real soon. Take care. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, uh, Lord Holmes, for uh, an excellent uh, keynote speech.